Hello, coding community and student I made this video series for. I hope you are watching and enjoying and whoever else comes along in the future with this incredibly niche question for their personal project or production project. They're moving on to something serious. Who knows? This hopefully will be a fun series for you. So in the previous video, which will be linked in the description down below, and that's all part of this yeah, will be linked in the description down below, so check that out if you haven't watched it already. And if you stumbled upon this and you're curious what the heck we're even doing here in part two. Part one, we split our server from the mono repo and built its own built its own project, its own configuration, options, build process, all that stuff. Boom roasted right here, got it up and running just like before. The front end, we had to change this fetch request to hit localhost colon 8080, uh, and we had to make sure it processed a cross-origin resource share no problem with a core's middleware and we were up and running in no time but again the student probably doesn't want to leave all of their react code in the mono repo boilerplate as it is well very bare bones and i doubt they want to spend a ton of time configuring webpack and things like that to try and optimize it when we can use some other more optimized production bundle like uh, again i mentioned create react app at one point it's kind of bloated these days and kind of you know slowly falling to the wayside in terms of popularity but it's still definitely very usable and then will also work very similar to how our boilerplate works by basically outputting a static web page and a bunch of a big fat app js probably code split into smaller files uh, uh i'm gonna choose to mess with a new one here on this video and offer a uh solution to a student or anyone else in the future is curious we're going to be using vite v-i-t-e uh it uses es build instead of webpack so anything to get away from messing with webpack configs is fun in my book i believe it uses go as the language that it the but like the build the, the builder and bundler uses go as its underlying language i'm fairly certain uh you feel like i read about this and i should have known hold on yeah, it's Go. Okay, yeah, it's 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 built. It's a straightforward API with JS and Go. So good stuff. Uh, yeah, it's built on ES build instead of Webpack. So I'm happy to get away from that. And I'm gonna show y'all how to deploy the site as well to Heroku because I know that the newest uh, Vite documentation doesn't include Heroku, probably because it doesn't have a free tier anymore. So they're like, eh. Uh, yeah, way to shoot yourselves in the foot, y'all. But. I will go ahead and temporarily make a paid dyno in Heroku so I can deploy to it because I know the student that asked this question has their site or their, probably their mono repo deployed on Heroku. So you would have to deploy this to its own Heroku dyno if you want to stick there or if you want to switch something uh, better and more modern, something like Vercel is a great option. Uh, and same thing for the website. It doesn't the, the front end here doesn't have to be deployed to Heroku. But again, I'm going to choose to do that since I already know the person I'm, that asked me this question has their stuff deployed to Heroku and already working there and probably feels comfortable using it. And again, they don't have tons of time to mess around with different deployment strategies for their production app, which already has users and income coming in. So I'm going to stick to Heroku because that's what they're using and that's probably what they're going to know. And again, this might be useful for someone down in the future going, I can't deploy this to Heroku because the documentation's out of sync or this package is now deprecated. I got you. Okay, so first things first, let's explore a new Vite application with React and TypeScript. So we're going to do npm uh, create Vite at latest. This is from their own docs on how to get started. We're going to call this the split React app folder and I should be able to pass a template flag to say hey use react dash ts as my template which that didn't clearly matter as it's going to ask me the framework I want to use anyway which is react and the variant is indeed TypeScript so okay the template flag didn't do crapola for us but whatever uh, we're going to cd into this sucker split react application I'm going to go ahead and open up my code editor window for this one right here and I'm gonna then I'm going to run the commands it tells me to get going here. So it looks like it just cloned the project, which means we have to still install our dependencies so this thing to properly work. And again, I played with this a, like for maybe 30 minutes before this video, so there might be some editing and jump cuts and pauses. Well, if I happen to run into something live that I can't quite explain without causing too much dead air, which should be fun. Let's get this thing running and see what happens here. It tells me to. Navigate to that particular page. Yeah, that particular page there. So we're going to go ahead and navigate on to it. And I don't know why I opened up double pages there. There we go. And voila, we have a beautiful looking little Vite application. It's default start running on a host and port it gave us. 
Uh, love that little CSS effect there. I might steal the crap out of that from their CSS. I like I like a nice home page, and they have some state updates. So beautiful stuff. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is a uh, it's it's more efficient and optimized. Like I said, it has faster build times and more quality of life features than something like Create React app does. So this is my recommendation to y'all moving forward if this is a route you want to go. So yeah. Uh, again, this is not a, a, a Vite deep dive. This is just getting it up and running and split into extension host. What is this? What is this? What is this man? This extension host bisect. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, okay. I just got an error. VS Code, ignore that for now. I'll deal with it later. Something about extensions not liking. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to be copying over here. Node modules, nothing's changed there. Public. This is where we're going to have any kind of public assets like images and things like that we're going to be including into our uh, into our website. If you have any images that you're going to be putting as a static asset into the public folder, that's where you're going to access them. Source, definitely all of our source code as well, although I find it interesting as a public and an assets React SVG. I'll look into that. Uh, yeah, app CSS, index CSS, just the cool styling they have on the default page. It looks like their entry point is called main.tsx instead of index.tsx. Ah, so that's what's happening with my bisect thing. That's not going to be fun. There was an error with... Interesting. <laughs> All right. I'll have to, I will have to not hit my... Hold on. I'm going to fix the error. And I'm back from a quick edit. I turned VS Code off and back on again, and it fixed the error, and my formatting's back now. So, classic IT fix. Uh, righto. So, instead of the uh, index.tsx, like from our boilerplate code from the Split Me Please that I've been demoing from, uh, you'll notice there's a couple of differences here. Why is this erroring out on me now? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, v okay, yeah. That error we saw there was telling us that this may select an element or it may get nothing, which means we'll get a null selection. And I'm telling it that now nah, we're getting it as an HTML element, homie. Trust me. So that was just a quick little thing I did right there. Yeah, so my coworker, Andrew, I just realized, updated it to this syntax right here for the newest version of uh, React v18 and all its newest features and whatnot. Uh, that's totally fine, but I will mention that the student that I have been discussing with probably has something more akin to this, and I was going to show them this kind of live here. So yeah, React DOM dot render our app document dot get element by ID root there. So. The student probably has something akin to this. If you're watching, uh, the difference between those entry points, this is something I'd recommend you do. Like uh, if y'all are still working on an old version of React and React DOM, I would advise bumping their versions up as well just so you can access, again, major version bumps typically in React world don't typically deprecate a whole lot and destroy your code base. So it's worth experimenting, especially if you're going to be using a, a bootstrap project like Vite or Create React app or Next.js or Remix.js or whatever gorillion different options you have. Like we know our Vite installation back here in their project has probably the newest versions of React and React DOM installed. So it'll be a good idea to convert your index style code on over to, um, this is split React app, so we gotta go back to the old one. There we go, split me please, yeah. So like in our index code, you notice here it's a little bit different. Um, I don't know how much you may or may not have in your index code, watcher out there and the student that asked this question, but to update it to the newest version, you switch to forward slash client, then you can import the specific function called create root. Create root will typically give you a variable called a root that's going to represent the root target you want to uh, pop this thing into that you want to render your whole app into. It's going to be our document select element right there. And again, this tells us, hey, uh, if there is no element of ID root in the DOM and this runs a selection and it comes back as null, then it's going to be a problem because it can't render it into a non-existent div. So we're going to just do a type insertion to tell it that now nah, we're going to be using this as an HTML element. Null is not a possibility. Then from there, instead of react DOM dot render, you render the app to the root and you don't have this second argument to that function anymore. That is how you convert uh, the to the newest version of React and React DOM to render your stuff and get all the newest, latest, and greatest features added on into it. 
Um, yeah, so that's that's what that student's going to have to do because I know they're probably, I mean, this thing, they started this boilerplate like over a year ago, so I know they're going to have the older versions if you're curious what that updated version looks like. And again, this is like, it came on in I think version 16 or 17, somewhere around there. But that's, that's the conversion you want to do for your entry point code. Okay. Now, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah, I mean, their, their boilerplate code looks pretty solid. I don't see anything too crazy you're going to have to worry about change-wise. React strict mode, uh, that is a development-only tool that has no output on production whatsoever. Uh, it just renders components twice during the development process, so you can help debug rendering problems and issues and state changes and things like that. But this, by default, is like activated during development, but not in production, which is nice to know. So, yeah. Oh, I see their syntax is a little different. Rather than creating that root variable, you can see they just kind of create it inline and then write dot .render right after that. So, they haven't changed too much uh, syntax-wise. They just omit the usage of the variable. Personal preference, I suppose. But okay. Let's remove this import index CSS because they're not going to have that here. We're going to go ahead and nuke that file because we don't need it. We're going to go ahead and nuke this file because we don't need it. I'm going to go in there and you know what we're going to do? We're going to go straight back to what's it called? Uh, split me, please. Go grab our app.tsx code and head on back to our new split react app and replace all that juicy code with this garbly mess here. Uh, this should still work just fine as long as you have your server running in the opposite terminal. But let's go back to our split react app. And again, unlike our boilerplate, it is coded to not have to require you to import react if you're going to write any TSX at all. Uh, that is just a default feature of Vite as well, just like in Create React App, you don't have to write import React from React in scope of the file anymore. It will know if, the, if it finds JSX or TSX in there, it'll automatically handle it as React code. So looking at what we got now, uh, the linting process here in uh, with their TS config setup, looks like they have uh, some rule checks on making sure that uh, unused variables are being told they're not being used and things like that. So it can help you optimize some of your component codes by making you be way more specific on what's happening here, right? So you don't just uh, leave like unused variables and imports and things like that. It's just, just a nice feature to have. But yeah, we're gonna copy and paste that code on over and we can see that no problem here. Once I uh, pasted it in and saved it, it gets hello world. No problem Reno from uh, our current server over yonder, right? So we're getting this lovely information from our server. So yeah, uh, it's working, no problem here. So yeah. And I almost forgot, uh, we probably should also have Bootstrap installed here as well. Uh, in our boilerplate, we do have the Bootstrap SAS added here as well as some custom overrides for some demonstration. I'm, sure, I'm assuming the student has done plenty of their own in-house styling probably using and hopefully using SAS or CSS or whatever, but we should probably move that on over since it's part of the boilerplate. I know the students using it in their projects, so let's find out how to do it. Uh, I'm going to npm install bootstrap, uh, and I don't know if you're using some of the bootstrap JavaScript stuff like the mouse over effects, modals, and toasts, and things like that. I'm going to probably assume not, but if you needed to, you could install them via popper js forward slash core it's a dependency that bootstraps like more advanced components end up using uh and then from there we're gonna install those and we're gonna have to have something to handle sas so we're gonna install the sas library as a dev dependency in this process here bada bing bada boom we're only gonna use it during the build process that takes care of that part i'm gonna go back into our project here into not split me please but split react app from here, we need to adjust our Vite configuration in order for it to understand that we're going to be using SAS and Bootstrap SAS in particular. So in our Vite config, we can add something called a resolve object that will have an alias sub object where here we can provide an alias. So if in my project, if I ever write uh, tilde bootstrap, is that tilde? Wavy line bootstrap. I think that's tilde. Uh, it's going to find the path of that by going and looking at, nope, not path.2d, where did that even come from? Oh, because we don't have it imported. So yeah, this is a import as path from path. Ooh, 
why, oh why is it doing this to me? Because it doesn't know I probably have that type in here. Okay, what we need to do is install the types for node so it recognizes it's there and I was hoping that would fix the error and I think it did. Okay, so yeah, that error, that underline error is saying it can't find the types. So I was like, this is running a node application. I don't understand why I would not recognize that path is not there. So we're gonna go ahead and now, uh, like I was saying, add this resolution, this path resolve into our code here to say, look, dir name, then into node underscore modules and then forward slash bootstrap. There we go. So this will allow us to resolve this alias via an import statement across our project here, which is nice. Uh, this way we can, we can head to and copy and paste over hopefully our, what's it called? Our SAS here without too much issue. So how does that set up in our boilerplate? It's a SAS folder with an app.sass inside of it. Head back to the other project. What we're gonna do now is, app.scss paste and now I can just write tilde bootstrap to have it properly resolved like that in development and in production with any luck along with whatever customizations you might have here. Okay. So from there, I think all we need to do is head to the main TSX and replace that with import this directory sass app.sass and that should be able to handle the bootstrap stuff for us now without too much issue. Oh, well, I'm not running the project not for one. So let's try that again. Go back into NPM run dev. Should be happy honky dory. Eh, it did not like that, did it? What did I miss? Because I had this temporarily working and then now it's all goop. It's an at import statement, is that what I wrote? At import tilde bootstrap forward slash scss forward slash bootstrap dot scss. <laughs> Node modules bootstrap invite config. Eh. <laughs> eh, well, I've got a different area, which is nice. It still says bootstrap. Why does it say bootstrap? I'm gonna have to just restart the whole build process. Hold on. Yeah, so love a typo here, folks, and a config. That's what I like to see. Hey. I'm still saying it's the old issue. Bootstrap. Bootstrap. Don't know why it's looking up the old path here. I tried the classic turn it off and on again, and it's still not working the way I'd expect. Why, oh, why has it done this? Bootstrap. Bootstrap. No typos this time, and yet it's still looking for the old path, you say. Internal server error. Bootstrap, bootstrap, bootstrap. Root style sheet, and it's still telling me that I see the node modules bootstrap, so I don't know why the old plugin there is looking. So once again, quick edit. This is a typo written video, y'all. What can I say? I'm missing a T in bootstrap on the right hand side of path.resolved. Get in the comments if you saw and were yelling at me this whole time. I'm leaving this fun stuff in though because, well, Again, I like to show that even though you've been doing this for a long time, you are not above the dumbest of errors. So bootstrap, bootstrap, no weird bootstrap or bootstrap, bootstrap, bootstrap. Corrected all the typos and um, it refreshes and works just fine. So man, oh man, oh man, I drive myself wild with these things. But there you go. We've now successfully added the bootstrap SAS so you can correctly style the project probably the same way you have since you've been using our boilerplate. Uh, from here, like I said, we're going to try and get this sucker deployed. Uh, but oh, before we get there, I need to show y'all another big thing the student's probably going to want to know how to do. Now, normally it, you don't push environment variable files to GitHub. So, I mean, and again, like because Vite is running a Node.js server that will build out your static web page, 
you can have two kinds of environment variables, those that don't get exposed to the client, so a, they help prevent accidents, and those that do get exposed to the client, something like your fetch root URL. So I'm gonna add a .env here as an example, and again, uh, if you don't want to push it to GitHub, so you always use Heroku's environment configs and things like that, by all means do so. So here, we're going to have two kinds of uh, environment variables. One that says test, one, two, three, and one that says vite underscore test equals one, two, three, four, five. Anything preceded with vite underscore will be uh, allowed to be ex uh, sent to the client, so it can be at build, it can be present, meaning this could be something like your fetch root address being localhost colon 8080 when you're developing in a local, and then in production, it could be the name of wherever, the URL of wherever your server is deployed. This one could be an environment variable that you do want to keep hidden during uh, the build process from GitHub. So you would not push this to GitHub, but give it to your local devs when they need it. Uh, and you could also still set this in Heroku's config vars. But let me show you how this works. At the moment, uh, the way you access these is via the following. Import.meta.env. And you'll see here that they have these ones built in already for you to use in, um, in uh, invite. So if, how do we tell TypeScript that, hey, hours are also a thing? To do that, we're going to head to the vite env d.ts, this is where you can uh, update some of that information. What we're going to do is by adding an interface, we're going to call it import meta env. And this interface is going to have a read-only property called vite underscore test, which will be a string value, and then test, which will be a string value. So this is where you would add, this is where you add your new uh, environment variable properties so TypeScript can recognize them. And then we're simply going to have the following interface import meta read only env will be whatever our import meta environment variables are going to be. This is how you can merge these new properties onto their the Vites meta envs that we're trying to use here, right? So we're done here in main. Uh, we're, yeah, we're in the app.tsx. Let's see if it works now dot env dot and voila we now have our vite test and our test env properties available so now we have typescript support for the environment variables for our project here so check this out what i meant by during the build process one's available and not the other let me just do a hard refresh and then a refresh there it is so yeah there's react strict mode by the way rendering everything twice it's again for debugging purposes and development but undefined is the one we have as test and vite un underscore test is one two three four five so uh again like if you have something that needs to happen during the build process but not get released to the front end the client you use just normal variable names for your environment variables. If it has to be usable in the client, which remember, if it's usable in the client, it's not hidden. So this is not where you put hidden keys and things like that. This would be, again, something like your fetch address, your fetch root URL. Uh, this value of 12345 comes from vite underscore 12345. So more than likely, you'd have something more akin to this. Your fetch base URL being localhost colon 8080 for local testing with that server running in the background. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that bottom console log, head back to our d.ts, remove test, and change this to be fetch URL. So like in your services where you built out a fetching request function instead of having a hard coder in these components, this is what you would use here in place of hard coding the local host colon part. So we'll say, Boom, like that. And that should be good enough for our testing here. So, yeah. No problem whatsoever. Hello world, still up and running without too much issue whatsoever. So, uh, yeah. That is what we're going to be rocking and rolling right here. Uh, and taking a look around here, I mean, we've basically, you, at this point, you would copy over all your component code and things like that and fix errors. Just like before, you could head to your tsconfig.json and always uh, take it to strict false temporarily. That way you don't get inundated with a crap ton of TypeScript errors while copying over all of your juicy code here from whatever project you're copying from. That's always something to keep in mind. Uh, 
This is their TS config for Node because again, it's running a Node server that compiles and builds everything ultimately into a static client. Uh, yeah, so if you're curious to see what it would look like as a test build here, what we can do is head back over to our terminal window and we can write a couple of commands, npm run build. We'll build out the project, basically making sure it compiles and outputs everything correctly. And let's see if it does that for production without too much issue. Yeah, looks like it built it just fine and it builds it out into a dist folder. So this is our, no, that's split me, please. There we go, dist folder that has all of our built out code and the required CSS via the compiled SAS and all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, uh, and if we wanna see how it looks, we can write npm run preview is a Vite command that runs Vite preview that allows us to see our built code now running in the browser, which it runs just fine here. So yeah, this is what our production site would look like, exactly the same as our development testing has, but this is how we're testing our build code from that dist folder and not just transpiling from our source folder. So yeah, that covers that part of the project, how we copy stuff over, which means I can now destroy the split me please window, so I stop going to it, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, and if we want to deploy this to Heroku, again, I'm doing this because I know the student that asked me this question does have it in Heroku. Let's see how we can do that. So I know I don't have my server deployed anywhere, so I know this request is going to fail. So I'm just going to set greeting as world right there, and we'll switch this to a console log. That way I don't... Yeah, that way we can see if we can set this environment variable in Heroku and have it work the way we expect here. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's get this process going. So, again, I'm going to temporarily run this on a dyno that I'm going to have to pay for and delete to make sure I don't get any kind of hits on it. But uh, two things we have to know. Uh, Heroku new stack 22 uh, has deprecated the usage of a certain build pack that we ended up all using for things like Create React app and static websites. So we're gonna be taking a different approach to deploy this on Heroku because again, the current Vite docs don't show you how to do it. Here's how I would do it. I'm gonna install a package called serve. Serve is very useful for, uh, well, serving up websites, which is what we're gonna be doing and how we're gonna be serving our static assets here, right? Basically our index HTML and all the associated app bundles that get compiled along with it. So we're gonna install that serve package right here. In our project, I'm gonna add the classic Heroku proc file, and we're gonna say web npx serve s dist. This will tell, uh, when visited from the web, it's going to tell our package JSON to run serve, the installed serve package, which is why we have to install it up in dependencies and not in dev dependencies, as Heroku will prune, aka remove these out, so we need to make sure it's a uh, regular dependency. Uh, to serve the dist folder, which should be our entire React website and all of its associated assets. So that's what our proc file is going to look like for this particular project. We already have a build script available here for uh, for Heroku to, uh, not her, dev, build script right here for Heroku to find and use. This is the script that will, Heroku will co-opt and build our project for us on their infrastructure. And we should be good to go from there. Uh, yeah. We need to create the project and set up a quick config. So let's do so now. Uh, I You would add this to your existing project, student that asked this question, if you are interested in it. Um, this, you'd add it, you could use the dashboard to add this thing to the build process, but we're gonna create a new one here. This is also where you could figure out how to add it to your existing one to replace it. Create, uh, I'll call it split react vites app as the name for Heroku. Hopefully that's not taken. I'll be surprised if it is. There we go. So now we've created that Heroku app on our dashboard. And what I need to do is set a configured variable. So we're going to say, hey, Heroku config set. And here is where I'm going to copy and paste that environment variable file right here. So I'm going to add also dot env to my git ignore. So it's not pushed. Over here, I'm gonna paste There's my fetch URL. Let's just say that's my deployed website right there, whatever that fake ass address is. Uh, we're gonna set that config variable, required flag, 
Ay -ay -ay, what have I done? Roku config set. Yeah, that should be fine for a configured variable. Man, this is a really hilarious video. So yeah, uh, what I meant to do is Heroku config app name was split this app name I just created, split react con <laughs> split react vite app config set. Now I should be able to hopefully paste this lovely environment variable with whatever goofy website I want to run on. Again, this would be whatever your deployed server address would be. Test.zip this time. There we go. Now it set that environment variable for us right there, thankfully. So now what I need to do is create a new repository for this. I'm going to call it the same name as my local repository. Create it. And then we're going to do the normal git stuff. And commit initial commit. Get push. I don't I haven't set the origin yet. Git remote add origin paste. Git push u origin main. Then we should be able to force a Heroku build. That is because I forgot to, man, a lot of forgetful stuff today. I forgot to tell that Heroku git remote a our app name, which was, I like how I wrote it and forget it immediately. Split React Vite app. I should have just called it the same name so I'm not confusing myself here. Cool. There we go. Now I should be able to do git push Heroku main to force a build. Hopefully this works out just fine. Okay, it's installing all the dependencies. It's gonna recognize the build script and go with it. And after Vite is building my production, it will output all the compiled and bundled stuff into our dist folder. Looks like it built just fine. It found the proc file, and hopefully our serve package will correctly serve our website to us. So to actually check it out in deployment, it'd be Heroku open. And yeah, we have a lovely production website right here that I will delete so y'all don't hit my dinos, <laughs> my dino max and charge my credit card. So yeah, that's how you would deploy a Vite app uh, over to Heroku, where again, I've said this several thousand times in this video, I know that student has. And hopefully this has been helpful for somebody uh, that happen to stumble upon this via some keyword searches of Vite, React, Heroku, TypeScript, all that kind of fun stuff. So, oh yeah, we forgot to look at what's it called. I'm gonna, I need to reopen the app real quick. Let's reopen it and take a look at our console log. Yeah, so we can see that that uh, environment variable is correctly set in Heroku and has a different production value compared to our development value. This way you can not have to constantly go into your code base and change some root URL variable like I know y'all have done in the past. That way you can just utilize this automatic environment variable situation to our advantage. So yeah, that about wraps it up for this video series. I don't plan on going any further, but if there's comments from either the student or others down below that say, hey, uh, could you go further and explain this scenario right here? Or could you use a different front end or something like that? Or could you deploy the server somewhere and show us how that would work and get it all working in environment variables? I'd be happy to do so. Just let me know. Uh, other than that, as always, make sure y'all subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Ask questions so I can make more content like this and push me to try and learn new things as well because this development journey on is, on, we're, is one we're on together. And if you want to see me make more typos or more dumb edits because I missed one obvious thing in front of me, then subscribe and see more like it. So yeah, that's all for now.